This is the home to over 90 mammal species, over 300 birds, 33 reptile species, 9 amphibians, and over 120 butterfly species. Covering an area of 4,577 square kilometers, that is 457,700 hectares. It is the Mole National Park, Ghana's biggest wildlife reserve, situated in the northern region of Ghana. As we drove through the main entrance of the park, I was anxious to find out what nature had in store. This is the administrative block, and after exchanging some pleasantries, it's time to go on a safari. My tour guide, by name February, was on standby to receive the crew. I realized he had a gun, and I was curious to find out why. What animals are we likely to get attacked by? Possibly. Cannot mention any. Oh, what kind of animals do you have in there? Okay, sure we have the there. antelopes, uh -huh. like the buffalo, okay. roan antelope, mm. atavis, the elephants. Mm. Yeah. And the dangerous ones could be what? The elephants? Any of them could be dangerous, you know, right? Yeah, any of them could be dangerous because none of the animals here have been tamed. And now the tour begins. The journey is rugged as we drive through the bushes. Finally, we arrive at a spot where we are told there is a pond nearby where the elephants often come to bath in the afternoons. Like many people, I was curious to see the elephants for the first time. Not so far away from us, I spot some strange animals. Wathoks, what we normally call bush pigs. How come the foreigners know that there are warthogs here, there are animals here they can come and look at and we don't seem to know? Because honestly, like I told you, I've seen these creatures only on TV. You know, there are cartoons of these, there's the cartoon called Timon and Pumba. And I think Pumba was, was the was a warthog, the bush pig. Yeah. I never knew that we had warthogs here in Ghana. When it enters, it's entering a hole, it goes with the, with the back. When it's entering a hole? Yeah, it goes with the back. Why is that? So that the... The snout? The tax. Okay. Will serve as its defense in case of any attack by the lion or the leopard or the hyena. Oh, so these are also endangered species? Yes. Clearly. They are in the water. In the water. It was a great experience learning about war dogs and time to move on in search of elephants. The very first sign of their existence which I saw was the giant footprints. Finally, behold two elephants, a sight and an experience one will relish for a lifetime. They haven't seen us? No, no, you know, it has foresight so oh, okay. the trunk mm -hmm. serves as a that is the most yeah. sensitive part of the elephant the trunk so, the trunk so you use it in drinking eating and at the same time to smell mm. so when they take our smell you see how it's curling it train it up mm. when you take our smell now it will uh, move so normally when we are the tourists we try always to take the wind direction mm. so we always take the direction of the the smell of, of, the, of the elephant yeah so now i can see that now we are taking their smell that is why they are so uh, stunning. They okay. smell us now, though. Okay, so it means that if we possibly, if we possibly change direction and the wind blows towards them into their trunks and they can smell us, yeah, yes, they'll quickly move. They'll move. Now, which direction would they be moving possibly? Towards us? No. Defense or running away? Move away, not towards us. They'll move oh, away. Really? Yeah. So, have you had situations where some of these elephants you know, were injured or sick and all that? You had to kill them? Oh, no. That incident has never happened here before. Okay. And these are not tame. There's no way. You know, in some places you can have a ride on an elephant's back. Yeah. And all that. It's not possible to try to to do this here, is it? Yeah, you can only tame it when it is very Maybe, young. Maybe, yeah. Very when it's young. young. Yeah. But as they are now going to do So, what, what do they really feed on? What do they feed on? The, the no, grass? They are, 
grizzles and browses. So this and and basically herbivores. Yeah. Yeah. And do we have incidents of poaching? <coughs> Where, where they feel endangered. Have, have, have there been any such incidents where we yeah, have you know, poachers coming in? Oh, 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 this is huge. You know, in a conservation Ooh. area, you cannot do away with poaching. Yeah. Yeah. But I think now it has been brought to its minimum uh, level. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying that you've had incidents of poaching where people are looking for the ivory of the elephants? That is. Some years Some back. Some years back. But yeah. this, this, this were not Ghanaians, were they? Or they were Ghanaians who were actually. They were, them yeah, they were Ghanaians. But we don't eat elephants here in Ghana, do we? No, we eat. We do eat elephants in Ghana. People eat. Oh, okay. Eat. People eat elephants here. Yes, they eat. But elephant sold on our markets? Yes, they sell them in our markets. This is news. I don't know about that. Yes. We don't disturb them here at all. Yeah. And you're saying you have over 400 of them? Yeah, over 400. Oh, that's impressive. And what's the lifespan of an average uh, elephant here? 60 to 70 years. 60 to 70. In a situation like this where we get spotted by an elephant, so then what? They could send signals to the others and then they could launch an attack. Or it could just on its own begin to attack. So before or it, it could run. attack, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it trumpets. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the body language of it too can let you know that this animal would like to launch an attack. Mm, so the trumpet is the first signal? So sometimes More like a warning signal? Yes, the trumpet is a, a warning signal. Of it. And then what would the others do thereafter? After this, uh, if one happened to follow, mm -hmm. the rest would uh, to run after the rest. Maybe the rest may decide either to follow or stay back. And in this case, what could happen to us? Oh, it will not hit me. And I know they can run very fast. Yeah, they yeah, run very, very fast. fast. It's very, it's very part of the, uh, the, uh, their weight. It's very fast. So it means that now we are the, the endangered ones. <laughs> we are the endangered ones here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Ah, because we've heard stories of elephants okay. attacking yeah, settlements, attacking settlements and bringing down buildings and all that. But it has never, elephants mostly has never uh, oh, okay. attacked anybody before. They only try to scare you. Mm. No initial. No, they are in their territory, so yeah. definitely. No initial. I told you, every animal has a critical uh, distance. Yeah. Yeah. So if you go beyond that, they try to scare you to move mm. backwards a bit. Yeah. So what, they're going to the water again. But, so that's yeah. this body lad. Hardly the uh, flies get is. Uh, okay. Flies. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's more like a protective cover. Yeah. Ah. So when after this, then it dries up. Then. <laughs> Okay. I'm so fascinated with the level of protection that the older elephants are given to the younger ones. I mean, what's, what's the whole idea? Is it because we are here or naturally that's how naturally. they operate? They move in a colony, yes. in a group like yeah. that? No, those that, they come in a group, a uh, family. Okay. So after they enjoy themselves in the water, they go, they separate to their family, their uh, familyhood and then move. Okay. So in a typical afternoon like this, you find them coming out to what? To, to bath because the weather is so hot. Yeah. We're all sweating right now, yeah. and then what? They go into the shade for a while, mm -hmm. feed. As we saw, we saw them feeding, and now they are bathing the mud. Mm -hmm. well, what's the idea of the mud here? No. Why are they bathing the mud? Because initially it looks so black, but now yeah. it's looking so grey. No, so after swimming, the the pores of the of the body is open, mm -hmm. so they bath the mud, yeah. to close the pores, and uh, the pores. Then sometime, uh, uh, by way of protecting itself by flies sitting on uh, on it okay and then uh, this okay yes by, by to protect heat mm. yeah but when it dries up okay then the body starts to itch it so oh, you have to come itch. yeah ah. so you come back to the, to the pool the pool to so tell, tell me about this pool here it, it's a pond actually right yeah how, how deep is this is yeah. this natural in the first place no it's artificial Okay, so how do you actually get the water? You you dug? Was is it dug out? Yes, yeah, it's a dug out. It's a dug out. Yeah. Okay, and how deep could this be, really? Uh, well, not taking the measurements of it. Mm. 
Actually. You, you mentioned earlier that there are crocodiles in here as well. Yes, there are crocodiles. So where could they be right now? In in in, in the pond? In the holes. They have holes oh. at the edges of the this thing. At the edges of, edges of the pond? Yes. They so they also go to hide in the holes yes. just to cool off a bit? Yeah. And then so what, what's it like? The elephants go in there to, to bath and then the crocodiles are in there. <laughs> what's the relationship? <laughs> When the elephants go in there, what, what happens to the crocodiles? Oh, they, leave the they go to the if they are at this end of the water, mm. they also go to the other bank. Okay. To also do their own things there. And then I... But how did you get the crocodiles here? Because this is a, a man-made yeah. pond. So how natural. did you? No, wait, wait. Is this a natural pond or was yeah. man-made? Man-made. Yeah. Man-made. But yeah. how come the crocodiles ended up here? Is it that you brought in crocodiles? No, and we they, didn't bring anything. They, in they reproduce and eventually. That's true. Okay. Bring in any crocodile here. Finger, see one, shoes, his head up there. Oh, there's a crocodile there? Yeah. yeah. So, how many crocodiles could we have in here? Are you not too sure? No. Oh, I see there. I see there's a little, some movement in the pond. Some movement in there. Wow. Yeah, it's there. You can see it. Yeah. You can see the crocodile. See the head. It, it appears it's actually approaching. Oh, there's another one there. Is that a crocodile? Oh, that ugly thing there. Yeah. Wow. We have a lot of those in the Look at even some over there. Yeah. Okay, so if we are patient, we'll see them coming out. Yeah. That is the now uh, they will not look at one. Here. Okay. Where? Here. Oh, that's a crocodile. You have no patience when they try to come out like you may see maybe it's going to chase you. Yes. Yeah. So is it possible to run away from them when they when they start chasing us? Yeah, you have to run. No, I mean I'm looking and I'm trying to appreciate their speed because we're told that elephants run very fast in yeah. spite of their weight. They are very fast. You see, uh, the speed uh, limit of is 60 kilometers. Mm. So after the 60 uh, kilometers, now the speed continue to. To appreciate. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, so that means it's not as safe. You can compare the speed of an elephant to that of a lion or a jaguar no. or a cheetah or any of those fast, fast moving cats. Yeah. So let me ask you, in a situation where um, you are told that maybe you need to transfer an elephant from Mole National Park to let's say Kumasi Zoo because maybe the elephant in Kumasi Zoo died off, mm -hmm. how would you, I'm sure it's a tranquilizer right? You just shoot it with a tranquilizer, it yeah. falls off, yeah. and then you tie it with a chain, and then what? Lift it that up. That tranquilizer on is uh, every uh, every hour. Mm. You have to give it another shot. Another shot. Okay, the tranquilizers can only last one hour. An hour. Okay, they wear off after one hour. So then what? If, if if you don't do that again, the elephant gets up. You're in trouble. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but but you, there hasn't been any such situation where you've had to transfer any of these elephants to. You know, another location, right? No, no, no. Wow. That's not happening in Moli here before. Wow, and they're all in their natural habitat. Yeah. So beautiful. I mean, it's a real spectacle. I can actually count what? One, two, three, four, five, six of them. But you're saying there are over 400? Yeah. So where could the rest the rest be? You know, the park is very large. It mm -hmm. covers an area of four. How, how, how long is it? How, how big is the park? How large? It's about 4,577 square kilometers. Wow. For some, for some reason, I'm not scared. I don't know. Of course, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. For some reason, I'm not scared. No, no, it's just a No, it's trying to scare us. Oh, is it? It's, it's, it just ran and came and hit the branch. <laughs> so they can actually approach trees. You know, we've heard yes, that they can actually, yeah. you know, quell their trunks yeah. around the tree and then. Yeah. Yeah, they've seen us. For now, the wind is blowing towards them.
time to hop into our vehicles and continue our safari through the park and catch a glimpse of other beautiful animals and plant species nature has to offer. This area is supposed to be a Guinea savanna eco zone with short trees and grasslands. But an interesting spectacle at the park is the beautiful variety of tree species and the striking landscape from bovals to floodplains, savanna woodlands and gallery forests with two spectacular waterfalls in the northeastern part of the park. are buffaloes which were sported at the steep hill plains in the Morley National Park, numbering over 50. I, I can see an interesting structure there. What is this structure? That is the tree height. Tree height? Yeah. Meant for? Uh, for tourists who mm -hmm. come here, come be a uh, uh, on it, okay. it's a viewing platform, okay. and then uh, have a view of animals that troop in here to uh, take this uh, salt lake here. Um, how safe is it? Because this is a forest area, snakes, some wild an an animals. Yeah. You can actually spend the night here, right? Y yes, with an the armed guide. Oh, okay, with an armed guide. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not too safe to be here alone. Alone, yeah. And That's what right. what trees is this known? Uh, Danelia olivaris. Danelia olivaris. Yeah. But how dangerous could it be if you're here alone with a tour guide, an armed tour guide? Yeah. Uh, it's not even allowed to uh, tourists to move alone in the park. How many of these do you have here? Mm, we have about four of them in the park. Four tree heights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what kind of animals? You get to see the same animals: the elephants, the what hogs, the birds, the antelopes, and all that. Yeah. Sometimes the nocturnal animals like the leopard. The oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. There are leopards here? Yeah, we have leopards and hyena. But how, wait, but how safe would it be for one to spend a night here with a leopard <laughs> or a hyena? You know, that, that sounds scary. Most, and all the animals here are not all that uh, aggress aggressive like other places. Because mm. here we don't harm them. Yeah, yeah but, but these are these are aggressive creatures by nature. I mean, and these are canines. A uh, leopard, a hyena, these are dangerous, you know, endangered species, but what would, how, how safe is one when one decides to spend the night just to have an appreciation of these nocturnal animals here? Yeah. Uh, we, that is why before one can pass a night here, mm -hmm. we get you an uh, armed guide. Okay. Yeah. So we'll take care of you to the following. Uh, so the armed guide doesn't sleep? No, he doesn't but sleep. you get to sleep? You can sleep. Really? And uh, is, is no mosquitoes here? Yeah, well, before one can pass a night here, we have to have a mosquito net. Okay. To tie it here, and then we are we are matched. But then again, there is no place of convenience around, is there? No, we have to dig it. You have to do it in the bush. <laughs> <laughs>
Sada region presents a fantastic opportunity. Uh, they're a natural um, habitation for all kinds of, of um, birds we are aware of, of different kinds of uh, animals. People are particularly interested in elephants and monkeys. We've got a number of sanctuaries that naturally exist within the region. Our focus will be on making sure we're able to put the infrastructure and the standards behind investing in the tourism sector to create the right sort of experience for the tourism community. Before you start asking someone from outside of Ghana to come and see it, domestic tourism encouraging your, your, your social network to, to see your communities. The people who were born in Accra, whose heritage is in Damango or Avwema, and they've never gone there because their parents didn't take them. And in their adult life, they themselves don't see the need to want to go there. So if you haven't gone there, how are you going to celebrate it for me to want to go and see what you have? Because of the vast nature of Moli, it is possible for investors to actually to come in and then develop walkways, walkways that are canopy-like, that can actually facilitate people to actually work on those walkways and then at the same time view the vast biodiversity that is actually existing in Moli. Sada will play a more facilitatory role, a more catalytic role to ensure that investors actually come into Moli and then look at the potentials within it and get prepared to actually put money into it. Away from the bushes, this is the first point of call for any tourist who wishes to go on a safari. How much do you pay? A Ghanaian pay five CDs per person, a non Ghanaian pay ten CDs. So you pay five CDs to do what? To embark on the safari tour, that to have a look of the animals. Just five cities. Five cities. That for a Ghanaian mm -hmm. per an hour. So if you and okay. we do in any you know, of the activities we embark on the, in this park, we do a minimum of two hours. Okay. But you can choose to do more hours depending on the amount you have within okay. the city. But that's quite but reasonable. A non Ghanaian pay five for an hour. Yeah. A non Ghanaian pay ten cities per person mm -hmm. per an hour. Okay. Yeah. But I'm saying it's still very reasonable. It's yeah, it's not reasonable. Too, yeah. It's not too expensive. Yeah. And you have the benefit of actually visiting the museum, yeah. which is for free. I, I never knew that Molly had such yeah. facilities and here, and I'm, I'm very, very impressed. This is the, a, oh, that's a beautiful craft, craft shop. shop. And I, uh, uh, initially, I told you we have 33 French communities. Okay. So most of these uh, crafts have been brought from the communities. The communities. Yeah. Okay. We sell, then uh, give them their money. Their money. We also have some benefits from the. Yes. From yes, the yes. I think I'm impressed by what you're doing here. So I would I would buy one of this for 50 cities, is it? Yeah. I would I would buy one and take it back to Accra. And I think it's it's good that we come people come up here and then yeah. you know support their business. Come again? Oh I think I can I can I can give uh, an extra. Okay, you know what? I'll I'll pay the 15 and then you can have a tip of 10 cities. At least for your for your little effort. It's not bright, this is just a tip. I think this piece of craft work, you know, is very symbolic. I just bought it from the the craft shop at the Mole National Park, thinking I was just contributing to at least supporting the, 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 the park. And I have just been told exactly what it means. Now, if you look at this chimpanzee here, I think it's covered its ears. Hear no evil. See no evil and speak no evil. Food for thoughts. As the sun sets, it's time to say goodbye to a memorable experience at the Molly National Park. It's day two and the tour continues. This is the administrative block of the park and I decide to say hello to management.
This is a map of Mole. Mm -hmm. uh, to start with, this is Damango. Okay. You know, this is the road from Fufulsu, Busunu, Damango. Mm -hmm. Then you are in Larbanga. Once you are in Larbanga, you are just uh, three kilometers to the park boundary. Okay. And this continues, the Larbanga, the road continues to Sola mm -hmm. along. So the southern part of the park share boundary with the Larbanga or Damango Fufusu Road. So when you are driving on the Damango Fufusu Road, you are actually driving on the southern boundary oh. of the Mole National Park. Okay. And to the to your, to, your, to, the, to, to the south of the road is the what we call the Kani Kani Forest Reserve. Mm -hmm. So this actually so the road so runs through. It's, it's a forest correct. reserve. Okay. It's a, because of weak protection, um, there's a lot of illegal activities going on, logging and mm -hmm. so yeah. Yeah, so but it's a forest reserve. Mm -hmm. Then this is the park headquarters. This is where we are. Yes, so just about two kilometers from the gate. Okay. This is where we are. In fact, this is the road network we have. Wait, the, you're you kidding me? Just this portion. Just this portion. Right up to this. That's all. For this whole area. Exactly. This is a less than five percent. Yeah, less than five percent. So this is the wet season access. And even there, in the wet season, you see this river, you see this area, mm -hmm. it can get flooded. Okay. And once it is flooded, That's you can't small. even yeah, you can't even go beyond this. So even the coverage reduces in the in the it's rainy about 10 season. Percent of it or less. It's, it's about five percent. About five percent. The dry season coverage I'm talking about, then you can continue. You see, this is a mo the Lovi River. It's a okay. big river. It's, a, it's about 30 meters span. Wow. Then you continue to the Mole River. Mm -hmm. This is the Mole River here. Yeah. The span is about 40 meter, 40 meter span. Huge river. We need two big bridges on this to be able to make it accessible during the rainy season. So it is only in the dry season when the water levels go down that we can at least manage to drive. And this is Upper West, okay. this part. You exit here and you are in Upper West. Why is somewhere there? This is Bulinga, so why is over there? So looking at what we see here, <coughs> ideally it means that we cannot just have one office. We should have about six or seven exactly. or more offices dotted across the entire uh, uh, landscape. For purposes of protection mm -hmm. of the park, we have a big camp here, this camp, Bawina camp, okay. to the east. We have about 22 staff there. Uh, Dussier, we also have about 20, it's a big camp. We have about 22 yeah, staff there. Right, yes. Then we, you didn't go there. Oh, we didn't? No, no, no. You, 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 you oh, didn't go beyond there. here. Uh -huh. You didn't go beyond this okay. point, yes. Dusia is in Upper West, far away. It's about, uh, yeah. In the rainy season, if you have to go to Dusia, you have to go to Sola, you have to go to Wa, wow. then before you come there. In the dry season, it's only 77 kilometers, very short. Mm -hmm. Two hours, less than two hours drive to that place. The but in the, if, if you have to go there in the rainy season, you have to travel 300 kilometers. That's just exit. Exactly. Exactly. And then Jam also have a 22 uh, staff there. So this is how we have distributed our staff. Then Paria, we have a small group, 10 people there. They are not there permanent. We move them every three months. Because, like you see, the whole place is, you know, they say, so we have to keep staff there at least to protect the northern part of the park. So in terms of protection, this is how we have distributed, deployed our men. So from their base camp, they now deploy to cover certain bits. Mm -hmm. why, why do you rotate the men? What's the idea? Here, it's such a deprived... No, those in Bawina, Dussier, Jang, we don't rotate them. Okay. Once in a while, we transfer them. After two years or three years, we transfer them to other camps. But those here, uh, it's so deprived mm -hmm. that, like I said, you have to go through the overseas area to get there. Yeah. Virtually, there is no any commercial... So we put them there, like um, temporary base. You go there for three months, you work because your family is here. You leave your family here, you just go there on a, like a duty. You go and perform three months, then we pull you, we send another team there so that we don't leave the place vacant. Yes. Muli National Park is uh, one of seven national parks, six wildlife resource reserves, two wildlife sanctuaries, uh, one strict nature reserves, two zoos 
on the five coastal Ramsar sites managed by the Wildlife Division of the Forestry Commission under the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources. Yeah. Mole was established in the year 1958 uh, in a typical Guinea savanna vegetation or ecological zone, uh, predominantly uh, open savanna woodland interspersed with grassland, uh, bovals, flat plains, scarp and gallery forest. Mole is the first wildlife protected area to be established in Ghana and the largest wildlife protected area in Ghana. It covers an area of 4,577 square kilometers. That is uh, 457,700 hectares. Yeah, and spans two regions, the northern region and the upper west region. The objectives for establishing Smole, just as all the other protected areas, is to conserve the universal outstanding values of the site. This include physical, natural, cultural, and historical. Uh, and then to protect and maintain life-sustaining processes such as uh, water catchment, soil conservation, and the genetic diversity, then to create opportunity for research, education, recreation and tourism, and last but not the least, to generate economic activities within and outside of the park. Mole is endowed with um, rich biodiversity and is home to over 90 mammal species, including five primates, uh, over 300 bear species, 33 reptile species and then uh, 9 amphibians and 120 butterfly species. And also in terms of plants, uh, we have about uh, 742 vascular plant species have been recorded in the park, some of them endemic. Indeed, Mule has four of what is normally referred to as the Big Five, which is of high touristic interest to tourists. And these are the, the lion, the elephant, the buffalo, the leopard, and the rhino. It is the rhino that we don't have in Mole, but we have the other big five. That is the lion, the leopard, the buffalo, and the elephant. And indeed, the Mole elephants are of special breed. You know, you don't find them anywhere. They are so friendly, they are not aggressive. Annual, you know, visitation of this is about um, 14,000 tourists per, per year. Indeed, and that was even when the road network leading to from Fufusu or from Sola to the park was not good. The number could have gone as far as to 20,000 last year, but for the Ebola outbreak, you know, um, they were still recorded up to 14,000 tourists a year. Domestic tourists, but of course there are some of the daring forest tourists still made it. Those who were, who were not restricted by their organizations to visit West Africa still came. But last year we recorded more local tourists than you know, um, foreign tourists. But in, in previous years, the, the reverse used to be the case. And I think that that has also been boosted by the, the construction of the road from Fufusu to Sola. That has you know, improved you know, movement and transportation generally within this corridor. Indeed, the only existing overnight accommodation facility we have in the park is the Moli Motel, which was constructed by the Wildlife Division in 1964. It's a 35-room capacity. That has even reduced to 34 now because some of the rooms have been converted into storehouse and all of that. Uh, not only is that facility too small to accommodate, you know, the increasing number of numbers of visitors that are coming to the park, we're looking at getting the private sector to develop and manage tourist facilities so that we as wildlife division will concentrate on delivering on our mandate, which is to protect the park's resources, the integrity of the park. And you know, um, to be able to attract any private investor into investing in those facilities. What is the selling point of Mole? The selling point here is the wildlife. 95% of the tourists to Mole are coming to see the spectacular wildlife we have. 
then the other attraction, whether it's a scenery landscape or whatever. And so no investor would put in his or her money if the, the, the pulling for, that is the wildlife numbers, are not encouraging. And so we think that to be able to attract investors, we should concentrate in the, making sure that the park is secured first and foremost, and then for the animals' numbers to, to build up to a level where it will be attractive to, for private investors to come in and then uh, invest in large development and management. The animals have what we call home ranges, and you don't restrict, this is not a zoo, and so you don't want to do that. What we can do as a management intervention uh, in building up animal numbers, like I was mentioning, once you give it the park good protection against offtake, against poaching, against other illegal activities that interfere with the animal, once you remove that factor, the numbers will I mean, naturally increase. As a management practice, you can introduce artificial salt. You know, in the dry season, <clears throat> this is a savanna ecological zone. In the rain, in the dry season, most of the river, the water sources get dry up. We live with few pools of, you know, water and few rivers running. So the animals spend a lot of time searching for water and food and this salt. And so they convert their energy, the energy that they would have used to reproduce. They rather use that energy to, to walk around and look for water. So as a management intervention, if we are able to develop water points across all sectors of the park, develop water holes and then the salt lakes and all the habitat requirements evenly and stop poaching, the numbers will automatically build up. We actually have the Mole Museum right now and I'm seeing some really weird things. This is what, what's, what's this? That's a buffalo. The head of a buffalo. It's, it's a male. Oh, are these real, real scars? Yeah, they are real scars. And they died naturally. Oh, so they died naturally? Naturally. And then you brought the scars and the remains here? Yeah. So this is the head of a buffalo. Whoa. I can't see the jaw. No, the jaw has been no, taken out. taken out the teeth. Yeah. Okay, and this is another buffalo, the another female? This is the female. Oh, that's the male buffalo and yeah, that's the, the female, female buffalo. The scouts. Yeah. Whoa, and then this is what? This is the uh, roan antelope. Okay. So you say this is the head of a roan? Roan antelope. Roan antelope. Yeah. It's, it's one of the species of antelope that you have? Yeah. How, well, how many kinds of species do you have? You know, we have the, the park. Uh, the, for the uh, the mammals, we have uh, 94 species of mammals in the, uh, the park. 94 species of mammals. Uh, mammals. Okay, and this is what? This is the ivory or oh, the tax of the elephants. Oh, that's yeah. what it looks this like. This is the male this reason is how, is why the, the hunters hunt the, uh, the elephants. Oh. This is ivory, this is what it looks like. So what is this used for actually? Used for? The ivory. Yeah. For the poachers. Jewelry. Jewelry and bungalows and all that. So many yes. things. Yes. Yeah. This is ivory. Wow. This is just broken. Yeah, and, and it's, and it's, this it's is not very the whole heavy. length of the elephants. Definitely, I can tell. And this is what? The tail of the elephants. This yeah. is the tail of an elephant. There's the brush. Shot. Unfortunately, the brush of it has been tailed off. Okay. Yeah. And this looks like uh, the hatabis. This is the hatabis. I don't know what that is. Yeah. This is. They look the, like antelopes, right? Yeah. They are within. Or they all fall and, uh, within the antelope family. family. Uh, yeah. And this is what? The water bog. Oh, there's hatabis and there's water bog. Water bog. How do you differentiate the horn? You know, this uh, both male and female mm -hmm. have the horns. Yes. But this water bog, the, only the males. Have the horns, the humans don't have horns. Yeah. Wow. And this is like a. This is uh, the cob. You can see the, the iron behind the wheel. Oh, that one. That is the cob. Okay. And this is the animal the, uh, the, in the northern sector. Before mm -hmm. a chief can be skinned, yes. this is the part the skin is set on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. Ah, okay. I see this. And 
uh, this is the bush buck. Bush buck. Bush buck. You can see the skin right here. Mm -hmm. We never had this what we use for the Abuatri festival. Oh. And then uh, we have uh, oh, don't tell an me. African uh, python. Which the what? Eight African? python. Eight, nine years ago, swallowed a crocodile and they both died at the second water hole. Whoa, wait, in Muli National Park. The python swallowed so the, the crocodile. crocodile. Yeah. And they both died. They both died. Wow, well, maybe the claws of the elephant. The, the crocodile. The crocodile may be clean the intestines of the elephant. So he had an internal bleeding and then he hmm. died. And how long is it? How many feet? Eight feet? Or more? Should be more. So this is the skin of a royal python. A royal no. python. This is not the royal python, this is the African African python. African python. python. Oh, so this is real? Yeah, it's real. In Ghana? Yes, we have a lot in Moli National Park. A lot of pythons. Pythons. Well, that, that makes the park very dangerous, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah. It makes the park very yeah, dangerous. That is why we advise people go with a close foot. Before you embark on the safari, you have to be in a close foot way. Yeah. Close foot way as in? Like, People go in a simple like Chaluati and what and what. No, we don't advise that. But how could that protect you from? Sorry. There are 33 species of reptiles in the in the park. Yeah. And they are they can be found anywhere in the within the park. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what this is the skin of a crocodile. Yeah. Whoa! This is what it feels like. Yeah. This is hard. This is very very hard. And this is real. Yeah, it's real. So how do you get this? The crocodile died. He and died and found it. So then, just, then what is this? The skin it's of a water. yellow buck daika. Buck daika. Yeah. In the antelope family. Yeah, within the antelope family. Okay, 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 okay. And this obviously is uh, the wish buck. The and this buck. is the the cub. Five years ago. Wow. So how do you preserve these? Uh, after scanning with dry wood, then we sprinkle uh, ash. Ordinary ash. Ordinary ash onto it. Okay. And what does that do? To prevent the uh, flies from sitting on. Uh, okay. 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 These are Yeah. Unless I'm wrong. These are some uh, ancient weapons. Uh, pro we confiscate from uh, the coaches, coaches we mm. do arrest in the okay. park. Is that trap? Is that trap? No, is this is a hunting lamp. Oh, the hunting lamp. Oh, the one you fit to your forehead. Yes, this is used for night, uh, the night hunting. Mm. Yeah. I remember seeing this in the uh, storybooks and all that. I've never seen one. Uh, so what? They, they put in the what? It looks like yeah. a bobo, like you know the yeah. this a kerosene this lantern. Low, you put a carbide here. Then uh, uh, water up here. Mm -hmm. This is the <coughs> the regulator. Okay. Then you place this on your head. Then you strike a match here. Then yeah. and it blares the eyes of the animal. Oh. And it, it shoot at. Oh, that's how it works actually. Yeah. Wow. And this obviously is a, is a knife, knife, knife jacket or yeah. uh, what do you call it? Uh, a holster. Yeah, well, a knife. Mm. And uh, this is where they put their arms and uh, their ammunition mm. as during their hunting. Mm. During the hunting. Put it's them. locally made. Yeah, locally made. made yeah. yeah. And what's this? Like a talisman? Yeah, it's a talisman. Well, what would they need talisman for? To protect them. So the sometimes animals. they believe these are the things they wear on them and can put. Uh, protect them from attacks. Yeah, or sometimes from being arrested. Wow, this is so weird. Yeah. This is so weird. Yeah. And uh, what else do we this, have here? These are all concussions. Yeah. What do you mean? Oh, these are also like the, talisman. The talisman. They wear around their... Sometimes their waist. Their waist. Or their neck. Their neck. Yeah. This one is my neck. Uh, <laughs> I don't think this will fit my neck. No. To go past my head. <laughs> yeah, maybe a, some persons... You need a head smaller head. Small, yeah. You need a smaller head. Yes. <laughs> A smaller head to have this. Yeah. This is not like we're a god, like for water. Is it? No, no, no. This is a fish. It's a global uh, fish. Very poisonous. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a global fish. Global fish. Yeah. Found where? 
in uh, the Moli River. Wait, wait, is this the face of the fish? Yeah, that, that is the face of it. Oh my goodness, this is ugly <laughs> and scary. You can find this in Moli. Moli. Where? In the pond? <coughs> you can in actually the, find in the river. Oh, you can find this in the yeah, river. In the Moli River. Oh, so that's the fish there, the face. And then. Oh my god, that's the tail. Whoa. It's not edible, is it? No, very poisonous. Very poisonous. Yeah. So it can kill? Yeah. When you, a little piece of it enter into your mouth. You are gone. Oh my god. Yeah. This is a very ugly fish. Yeah. So what if you press this, what am I gonna get? You no, know, white is in water. Mm -hmm. It's not it looks like an ordinary fish. When you it's at shore, then it continues to uh, Oh so it bloats when it's Yeah. When it's at shore. Oh, this is weird. Never heard this anywhere. Yeah. Strange things are happening. So and this is also what what yeah. is this? It's also uh, uh the juju. <laughs> wow. Wow. And this this is the the skin of the roon antelope. Mm -hmm. The it's, it's got a line on the back. Yeah. Like so a rich back, yeah, a dog. It's you know. a very beautiful animal. Oh. And it is one of the the protected animals. So this is what it looks like in real life. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's beautiful. So if we happen to go out, maybe. I'm sure we'd encounter the yes, roan antelope. The roan antelope. I'm sure we'll encounter one. And this, what's this animal? A that is a grey daika. A grey daika? Yeah. What, what animal is this? Uh, oh, the one they call a trainer. Uh, yeah. I don't know the English name. Oh, you said That's a grey daika. A grey daika. Uh, and this is the water book. The water book. Yeah. Oh, this is what it looks like. Yeah. That's, that's some some interesting pieces you have here. And then we have the hartebis. Okay, this is what the hartebis looks like. Yeah. I don't know what it says. Yeah. This is the first one I've seen one. I'm sure we'd all say we saw antelopes. Yeah. But mm -hmm. they are not antelopes, they are all antelopes. What are these? Hartebis. 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 Hmm. The, this, this is a gene trap being set in the fall by poachers mm -hmm. to catch in all these antelopes. How does it work? Press here, and then scoop in here. Then one of these gets down here. Mm -hmm. Then you lock it this way. So it is there. So the antelope, the antelope walks in its steps? One walks in its steps. It shoots up. And it kills it instantly? No. It won't die. It will die. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then a, we have the tortoise. This lives on land. Mm -hmm. yeah. and then we have the turtle. This lives in water. And we have a lot in the water hole we visited this morning. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. Then uh, back here is the ear of the elephant. You're joking. Yeah. That's how huge the ear looks like. Yeah. The ear of an elephant. elephant. Yeah. I'm sure many people have never seen this. And it feels so weird and it's hard. Then, uh, this is a full ear of a, yeah. of, of a fully grown elephant. Ones, one side. Wow. Then uh, we have the baboon. Oh, yeah. very fairy. Yeah. Oh. That's the baboon. Yeah. So what, you have to wait for all these animals to die before you can actually collect their remains. Yeah, yes. So it means that when the animals are alive, your, your museum is empty. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, you've been doing this over the years, so yes. definitely Molly has been in existence. How yeah. long has Molly been in existence? Uh, it started in the early 1950s. Oh, so clearly yeah. over the period you would have yeah. casualties. Oh my god, and this uh, is a crocodile. This is a crocodile. This is a real scar of a crocodile. But people buy this for medicinal purposes. Yeah. But they believe, <coughs> they believe in a certain potency that these cows have. Are these real? Yeah, I mean, they are real. I'm talking about the the, 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 the the purchase of the heads of crocodiles that many do for medicinal purposes. Yeah, but here, if you come here, you will not get it. Mm. But you know of it, that people are buying yeah, we are white scalps. Yeah. There's another head. What's the difference yeah. between this and that? Male, female? This should be a female. Okay. And, a female. and then this is what? It's a snake. That is the royal python. Oh, that's a royal... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Even in death, yeah. 
<laughs> Even in death, I do not want to touch this. This is the head. The head of a real python. Scary. I can't believe I'm touching this. <laughs> it's not a good feeling at all. Trust me, it's not. And it's a full length. Yes. Yeah. But these are not poisonous snakes. No, no, they? no. They are, they are edible. And I see a friend. Who's that? This is a mongoose. Oh, that's what a mongoose looks like. Yeah. And this is also another nocturnal animal. Mm -hmm. That's the baboon. The baboon. And yeah. This is what? It's a grey diker. The animal. Oh. Animal. That's... So that's a baboon. Yeah. And that's another species of baboon. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. This and another baboon. And this is what? And an advac. Another animal. Hmm. A nocturnal animal that lives in the hole. Okay. Yeah. And this is, this is another. Oh. A hyena. Oh. Do you have hyenas here too? Yeah, we have. You have hyenas here? Yeah. And this is uh, the same. Oh, male, female? Yeah, this male and female. And this is so beautiful. And uh, have the, oh, the yes. bone, the shame bone Wait, of the I elephant. I, I can carry this. This is, this is what? This is what? The shame bone. Shame bone? The, the front. Whoa, this is heavy. Bone of this the elephant. Very heavy. Yeah. The, wow, I, we have the. How much does an elephant weigh, actually? Fully grown elephant. Do you have an idea? No, oh, this, this is serious. Then it is very heavy. Yeah. Then we have the skin Which of part the, of the elephants. Skin? This is the lower abdomen of the oh, elephant. Uh, some say the elephant is not hairy, but it's yeah, like I, I so can you, can, feel, you can feel it. To see I can feel some funny hair. Yeah. It feels like uh, the, the... In the form the, of a brush. The brush. Oh. The white scalp. Of the elephant. So, trust me, if, if a I male this, elephant. If I saw this anywhere, I would not believe it's a scalp. Okay? It looks like a tree, a beautiful tree. Yeah. An elephant scalp. That's a male elephant. Then, uh, this is huge. We have the trunk of the elephant. This is the trunk of the elephant. Then uh, these are the skins, the skin of the elephant used in carving the map of Africa. Okay. Mulin, uh, Ghana. Oh, that's the Ghana flag there. Yeah. That's the Ghana map. Then uh, Africa, and then uh, the map of Muli National Park. Okay. That covers an area of 4,577 square kilometers. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Then, I uh, see, I see. Yeah, we, are, we soon get there. This is wow. the, the lower jaw of the elephant. Uh -huh. Then we have the front foot, and then this is the back foot. That's the front foot of the yeah. elephant. The real front foot. Of yeah, the real, real foot, front foot. Wow, so many people have no idea what you guys have here. This, this is the back foot of the, the back elephant. Foot. Yeah. Then, uh, another lower jaw here. Then we have the back foot bone mm -hmm. of the elephant and what's and that the, premature baby yeah the produce of the elephants this was born premature yeah it was so, a year old in the mother's womb when an unidentified gang man killed the mother in 1982 and we have been able to preserve it up to date since 1982 yeah wow this is impressive yeah. this is impressive and it hasn't gone bad. No. So what, what do you use in preserving this? Formalin. Formalin. Yeah. Same formalin that is used for yeah. dead bodies. Yeah. Wow, for you, So time. now at the moment it's lying in the pool of formalin. Since 1982. Yeah. Do you do you do you drain out formalin? No, we continue topping it when it gets to touch the body. Mm -hmm. the, then we topping it. How come it why because it evaporates? It is evaporates. So you can see the yeah, of the uh, this thing. That's a real elephant. elephant. Yeah. The features. 
So it wasn't it wasn't fully formed actually. Yeah, it was a year old. You know the. No, it, it looks like a fully formed elephant. elephant. Yeah, you know the gestation. How long, how long is the gestation period of the for, for an yeah. elephant? Twenty two to twenty four months. Twenty two to twenty four. Yeah. And it was actually in its mother's womb for what, ten months. Yeah. And the mother was killed. Killed. Yeah. Wow. But even ten months, it looks fairly. You know. Also, that's the umbilical cord there. Yeah. As umbilical cord. Just like humans. Yeah. So I could, but it, it, it looks fully formed. It's fully I formed. I see a full trunk. Yeah. Clearly, I see the ears. I see two. So I was telling you, it was a year old. Mm hmm. 12 months. Yeah. Wow. That's impressive. That's impressive. These are not doctored pictures. These are not pictures from from overseas. I mean, like no. a magazine or. No. No. Whatever you see here uh -huh. is in Moli National uh, Park. No, but are these creatures that were captured in the park? Yes. Really? Yeah. These were these are creatures That's captured in the park with your own camera in the park. Yes. I'm surprised. I see a lot of greenery. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. Most of them were taken during the uh, the rainy season, so okay. the place, the forest was uh, green. Okay. These are not foreign pictures. These are real no, 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 no. pictures taken in yeah. Ghana at the Moji National Park. Moji National Park. Wow, I am I'm surprised. So these are elephants swimming. Swimming. Oh, yeah, yeah, taking what, a what bath. Have we visited? So how, how close did you go and taking the who, who took these pictures? Do you have an idea? Uh, about one uh, of the tall guys, Samuel Lampon Samuel. Ghanaian. The Ghanaian. Oh, that's impressive. I'm yeah. sure he used a uh, uh, camera with a very long, I mean powerful lens yeah. in capturing the details of these these animals. So you have bats. Here? Yeah, we have bats. And you have all these species, species of, birds. of birds. We have over 344. Over 344 of birds. Wow. And this is clearly a baboon, right? Yeah. And what's that? An anthill? Anthill, and then uh, some amphibians. Oh, it's like the millipedes and centipedes. Yeah. Oh, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. This is here for people to know that uh, to know that we have this species of animals mm -hmm. in this park. But, but they are not extinct, they are still existent. They are still in existence. So we yeah. can get virtually every species of animal that you have here. Yeah, everything that we see. Maybe apart from the uh, the Afri uh, African, African python. python. That I, I, I don't think I want to see that. <laughs> I honestly don't think I want to see that so African Apart python. from that, all the species... Where, the where did the head go anyway? Oh, uh, this is the head. Oh, the head is yeah. still there? Yeah. It's there, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't realize. So, all the species, species line up on this table. Mm -hmm. You have the chance to see them when you go out on okay. your safari. So, tell me about the uh, maintenance of these, uh, I mean, the patronage of the, the museum. You know, here we don't it's charge, it's opened. It's open. It's open. So, so, so for free. Free. Anybody who can here. only donate. For the active of the of the place, do people donate? Yeah, they donate. They do. Ghanaians, foreigners, both. Okay. Yeah. But then I realize it's a construction work going on outside. Obviously, you may need more space yeah. to accommodate more of the scouts and the remains that yeah. you have here. And, uh, how is that going to be completed? Oh. What's the idea anyway? I mean, no, have the, you outlived the space? Yeah, you know, we have a lot of things to show to people. And uh, the place is too small. Tourism is easily one of the untapped areas of opportunity in respect of development in our country. And again, I think that the Sada region presents a fantastic opportunity. I think private sector um, needs to perhaps be more accessible. And, and take advantage of what is available. We are not looking at business opportunities through the activities that we have. We, we don't do that. We, do, we, we see them only as entertainment. And so we go to experience it and walk away without seeing what business opportunities are in there for me and ask what, what, what can be done for me if I want to do this. Is there, is there potential? If you want to actually attract invest, investors or you want to actually attract tourists, who are actually big money spenders. You need to develop the hotel industry to a very high level that will actually meet the demands of this category of people. 
After seeing all those remains at the Mole Museum, I had a better appreciation of the kinds of animals that existed in the park. I had a few questions for management, especially regarding the safety of tourists and how well trained the tour guides are for any eventuality. Apart from carrying firearms, they are well trained, combat, combat ready. They are taught bushcraft, what to do when you are in the foe, you know, and then what to do when you are faced with, you know, danger, either from animals, uh, from the wild, or from even poachers, how to take cover, how to fish out your enemy, you know, and when you are under attack, what to do. Yes, so, so training, we do the training, because we have trainers of trainers. Uh, some of us have um, undergone serious uh, training, you know, military training, survival, even gone to, uh, yeah, so, yeah, bushcraft, and then, so, we are, we have a very strong uh, capacity when it comes to training our staff for field work. Throughout my working life, in wildlife, uh, over 20 years, we have not recorded a single accident where a tourist has been harmed by um, uh, animals. And like I said, uh, the animals naturally, especially those, you know, in the tourism zone, uh, we make sure that the place is secured. In one, the animal is not wounded, and they get used to people. They are not aggressive. The, if the elephants, then, and I, I've said earlier on that the mole elephants appear to be a special breed. They are not shy. They know humans. You know, they are very friendly. And as for the other animals, you know, we virtually live with them. It is said that the private sector is the engine of growth for Ghana's economy, an assertion the management of the park agrees with. To start with, uh, the state must develop access, linking all the sectors of the park, especially targeting where we think there are potential concession sites. That is the only way the, uh, the potential investors can take up the challenge because they know when they put in their money, the tourists will come and they can make their money in good time. If you take the rainy season access, I think uh, the, road, the road network covers just about 5% of the whole park. Yeah, the rainy season asset is just about 5%. Because from where we are seated at the park headquarters, in the rainy season, you can't go beyond um, 25 kilometers from where we are seated Even with the four wheel drive. drive. Because some part of the, the, that road is inundated by water, it's flooded. If the dry season asset could go as up to about 10%, that's all of it. We have an airstrip in Mole. Strip. And uh, I know the Tamale Airport is being upgraded to an international standard. There are a number of airlines operating in, 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 in Ghana and coming to Tamale. I believe that if the Mole Airstrip is rehabilitated, it's just at the gates. Yes, it's an 800 meter airstrip just for lighter aircraft. But it's no longer in use, it's out of use now. I believe that if we are able to rehabilitate that airstrip, you know, I mean, somebody wanting to come and enjoy money for a day, you travel 14 hours, the people want to come, but the travel time is too much. So I believe that if the Mole airstrip is rehabilitated and expanded, some of these airlines can even choose to touch down in Mole, drop some tourists or pick some tourists, and that will even boost. Yeah, to improve the transportation system. For close to 10 years now or more, we have been trying to identify people or private investors in the of and uh, managing them. Some kind of concession agreement, belt, operate, and handover. But fortunately, I think for about three years now, we've managed to get an investor who is interested. And then the, we have granted the first site, which is um, going to be a 25-room uh, medium to luxury 
ecological yeah e ecology ecology yes once the first site is is done hopefully by the third quarter of this year they'll move to the second site and start developing that would add about 50 uh, luxury uh, rooms lodges to the existing one After all that talk, I took a drive to the construction site to catch a glimpse of the much-talked-about Eco Lodge, which is expected to boost tourism at the park after completion. They started in uh, 2012. The construction started with the project manager Alex Saite leading the team. This is going to be the first ki its own kind of uh, lodge in in Ghana. It's basically, we can say in West Africa. Uh, with all the facts that this is going to be a complete full-fledged uh, safari lodge. Uh, in the market, we are really looking for the, the Ghanaian market, definitely if you ask it. Uh, we will be having looking for, there's a lot of opportunities in, in Ghanaian market from the sectors of expatriate segment. We have uh, the uh, mining, uh, the mining is a huge year, so, and there are a lot of opportunities in that sector. And even for the, the Ghanaian, I'm sure they will not have a facility at something like this in this country uh, for them to explore. So rather they pack their bags and book their flight tickets out of Ghana, they can come, hopefully they have a weekend come here and explore the safaris. We're going to have more uh, safari, uh, other guest activities. We can see the touch works is all happening because that's all the rooms. We'll, I'll take you there and I'll give a small description on that one. This is, this is impressive. Huh? This is going to be our restaurant. In terms of uh, hospitality, yes. I hope you are bringing the East African attitude uh, we are. Um, we say. see. I have worked with uh, Aman Resorts. Okay. I started my career with Aman Resorts, which is having small, uh, which operates small facilities all over the world, and they are the number one chain yeah, resort right. in the world. Yeah. Aman Resorts International, which okay. is a Singapore company. Mm -hmm. uh, they are more into more personalized service, and they create their own philosophy and their own work experience. So I worked my career with starting from the first six, six and a half years in a yeah. jungle with their wow. one of their signature property in India. So what was the motivation for me? What was the motivation for coming to Mali? For me? Yeah. Uh, that's what my passion to work in the, in safari lodges and uh, may I am not a city person, so for me it is a, it's, it's, it's a lodges and the safaris and the jungle wow. and the animals will make me happy. <laughs> so that made me to move to East Africa yeah. where I explore another couple of years mm -hmm. with lots of uh, lions Whoa. in Man Maniara National Park. And then it scary? Ah, it is wonderful. So are we going so, to see the rooms? Yeah. I think we can go from... I'll, I'll, oh yeah, sure. This is now going to be our restaurant. Okay, the restaurant have, yeah. Yeah. That area yeah. will be have the buffet okay. counters and uh, that is going to be a kitchen. Uh-huh. That is all about the central facility. Okay. They are still working on the uh, thatch as you can see the roofing, the mm -hmm. pathway they are just covering this part. Yes. I'd like to see the room, see how pressure sure. yeah, how spacious. Sure. So we had HR uh, challenges here, but the general we have challenges have you been in the so in, in scale of uh, skilled uh, staff and getting it. Mm. But uh, we had managed to get a good building, we have a good team, okay. selecting, uh, we had almost interviewed 200 people mm -hmm. and to take a selecting a shortlisted uh, mm -hmm. team of almost 40 to 50 people. Okay. And I'll take you to the room. So you have all these workers stationed here, are they coming? The we are building a staff village outside the park. Okay. Uh, we're heading our electricity from VRA okay. and then we have a backup generator for almost 400 kV. This is only for the solar we had installed initially for the supplying hot waters to the kitchen and all the rooms. Oh, okay. okay. So basically one each uh, plant uh, unit will serve uh, uh, hot water for the three rooms. Wow. So this will be this will the entrance, entrance, main entrance for main the lodges. Lodges and then uh, we this is going to be the balcony of the yeah. tent. A clear demarcation from exactly. there. And we, there is, the, in this structure, we, there is going to be a uh, canvas, a okay. tent material coming in. Okay. It is not going to be a wall or anything. Yeah. So you can see, this is the going to be uh, the frame for, you can see the frame mm -hmm. uh, for the door. Yeah. So we get inside this. You can see the two windows. Okay. This will be the head one part and the bed will come in this part. And then we'll have uh, here uh, a, a cabin with a TV, which can be folded. If there's no guests on either, they can fold it. Wow. So that how, how secure would it be? 
uh, pretty secured, fairly. It is secured. Uh, you mean the security of the guests? Yes, the security of the guests and the structure itself. It is too strong. You can find it out. This, all these woods are uh, thick and rotted, and uh, it has been uh, used medicine uh, for the last uh, two or three times. Okay. They did it all it and it will be more. Okay, so this is actually the. Uh, yeah, they will be holding that in material. Okay, okay, this is actually holding the material. Yes. More like the pillars. Okay. Uh, it will be tied to this part. Yes. So basically, it is not going to, but this is holding all the structure. Okay, yeah, clearly so. Yeah. And you have about what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Yes. Which is, which, is, which is fairly okay. This is quite impressive. And there was a washroom? Yeah, we go into the back there. We have the wardrobe here. Okay. Here, and then we have the uh, water basin coming up. Two water basins coming up. Yeah. With hot water supply. The height is a bit low here because this room is for, is for this handicap. Oh. So you can see the height. So of you're it. actually making um, provision for yes. scaling challenge. Yes. Or? Yes. This two rooms. We have a one room in this side wing and the other room in the other. So only two rooms for the scaling exactly. challenge person. What if you have more, more than that? Uh, this is going to be the shower area. Yeah. This is beautiful. I, I'm particularly impressed because this are the stone works we do it. This all stones have been taken from the site while they're doing in the project. So then they made it. This is beautiful. And everything is but there's no water flowing. No, no, not yet. Wow. This is almost completed. It's almost completed. Just almost need to completed. fit the uh, Oh there's oh, water there's actually. Water. Sorry. Wow. I didn't know that. There's actually water flowing. This is beautiful. This is magnificent. I mean, we would have missed all this opportunity. Well, so you think that uh, you hope to finish this by... Uh, by May. By May this year. Uh, April. By April. We are planning for opening this May. Ooh, and then what's going to become of the, uh, the environment, the outside space? See, we are not going. To, it's going to be natural vegetations like this, mm. just growing up. We will not do any uh, lawns or anything artificial things. Mm -hmm. It is just going to be its own way. Do you, do you think you'd want to bring in some beautiful uh, animals around, or you think you want to just leave Keep the it. space as it is as for it lodging, is. Exactly. so that all the natural habitats, the animals are there for you to see when still, you want to. Still, exactly, but still, uh, we can see that we have uh, elephants walking through in our camp in another part of the other side. This is going to be our outdoor shower unit. An outdoor shower unit? Yes. What's the idea? Uh, the guests can enjoy a shower outside. <laughs> With no door? With no door and they come from that area uh -huh. and then it's their own private. Uh, I mean we used to do this when we were kids. You know, <laughs> most, most houses have the outdoor shower area. But growing up we stopped doing that. <laughs> It has started with one investor. This investor is going to start. It is they are going to do their own marketing. They have their marketing strategy, and so definitely the interest is going to to grow. The promotion has started. People are going to come, and we owe it a duty to be able to accommodate them. So we need to expand our facilities. In tourism, it's really about an experience. Um, the kinds of hospitality facilities that will be available to support all of this interest from this growing middle class, uh, to create um, a tangible place for people to go and just relax and enjoy themselves. And I think that the Sada region is one of those regions where you really can lay back and, and just enjoy the opportunities that are presented. So uh, I think that we can only expect very positive outcomes. Uh, we're looking forward to continue to work with the Secretariat to ensure that once the investors have been presented with the opportunities, the process of rolling out the investments becomes very efficient. And again, I think that's probably the most powerful case for the collaboration between the GIPC and, and the SADA Secretariat. The way to go is private partnership. I mean, in all the, world, in, in all the countries that are doing well with, with tourism, that I've, I've had the opportunity to, to go to before and during this appointment, have, have individuals, private people, private people, putting their, 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 their economic power behind something they believe in. I think this is one of the key locations that SADA would actually try and facilitate 
private sector investment so that people, uh, the Moli Ginga actually enter into a PPP arrangement to develop the tourist sector in Moli. This is Ghana's Northern Savannah Ecological Zone, a place where great things happen.